it may come to no surprise to you that ranking up in Marvel Snap, a competitive card game, is a significant motivating factor for a lot of players. And so when ranking up becomes extremely difficult or unpredictable, people get a little frustrated and rightfully so. So in this video, I want to talk about five different factors that are kind of related to the difficulty a lot of players are experiencing ranking up right now. And uh, this is most notable for me because in past, you know, I haven't taken ranking very seriously, but this season I told myself, you know what, I'm going to take a little more seriously. I want a high win rate. I want to rank up higher. And uh, so I've been experiencing a lot of the frustrations that you guys have been as well. And I actually want to talk about one of them in particular is absolutely infuriating, but the other ones kind of start to make a little more sense once you really Really think about it so let's start the discussion with number one and that is the first thing to understand is that less new players are coming every day now obviously as players we don't have the same metrics that second dinner might have but uh, I can tell you from a, like a youtuber perspective that we're seeing less new players coming in every single day and that might change with the battle mode release and with obviously the 1.0 PC release there's always going to be new influxes of players but the reason why this is relevant is because with ne uh, less new players coming in that means you're facing off against more experienced players on a regular basis. This is key because more experienced players not only are going to start, you know, building their collection track and they're going to have more access to cards, but they'll learn how to pilot those cards better. Newer players or players that are very casual and just experimenting might be a little easier for you to feast your cubes off of. We're getting less of those players right now because the game is kind of in a, I don't want to say a maintenance state, but we're, we're kind of in between major releases, so you're going to get less hype and less influxes of new players. And so your ability to kind of feast on those new players is limited. The matches you're getting are likely against more experienced players, regardless of their rank. And if you can't take a look at like social media, whether it be Twitter, Reddit, or whatever, you'll see that a lot of players, even experienced players that are kind of struggling in the mid 50s and 60s, are still like, you know, they're experienced players. And so if you're in those ranks, you're facing off against other players who have experienced profiles in the game, but may not be having the same levels of success. So definitely keep that in mind that when there's less new players coming into a game you might be facing stiffer competition because you're facing experienced players with that being said the reason number two is that players are honestly just getting better um, with more experience comes better skills and as you build a skill profile in this game by playing more by playing for you know since the release or since beta or whatever it happens to be you're getting better at the game and so is everyone else around you this is important to understand because there's also a lot of content out there on youtube twitter and elsewhere which was going to help players get better at the game. The deck lists are being more refined. The, uh, you know, the, the actual play styles and the strategies towards snapping and retreating are getting more exposure. Players are getting better. And as players get better, that skill ceiling to rise through each rank increases as well. As time goes on and less new players are entering the game, you're going to have more players of greater experience levels getting access to more resources like deck trackers and other things that are going to help them to be successful in the game. So the competition is only going to get tougher. And then on that note as well, the reason number three, especially if you're in those middling ranks between like 50 and 70, you're going to be facing almost no bots. The reason why bots were included in the game is because Second Dinner wanted there to be very snappy, no pun intended, matchmaking. They didn't want you to wait like a minute and a half for a match. They wanted you to get in a match rather quickly. That was a key uh, kind of design component of their overall goal. So bots were included in order to kind of, you know, smooth out the wait times in the events that the appropriate match couldn't be found with players. And during the beta, bots were very prevalent. But now that we have a worldwide release, a lot of players are playing, especially in those middling ranks, you're not facing bots all that often. Bots were often kind of easy cubes. Although sometimes they're a little clairvoyant and they cheated a bit, they are much easier on, on aggregate than a human player. Human players are much more skittish, they retreat much more often, they're much more intelligent naturally, and they obviously do you know specific combos in appropriate ways. Sometimes you'd have bots with a deck that like they were playing incorrectly, like they are literally piloting the deck incorrectly because they're bots. Human players won't do that. So if you're in those middling ranks, you're kind of like on the bell curve, so to speak, of Marvel Snap and you're going to be facing a lot of human players and that is why the ranking can feel so difficult. Less bots, more humans, more competition all around. And these first three points kind of really mend themselves together to really help you understand like wow like that actually makes perfect sense like that is what I'm experiencing a lot of human players and a lot of competition and that's why those middling ranks can feel like such an insane grind the fourth reason and I, I feel almost bad saying this because I, I don't think it's completely fair to second dinner but it is worth mentioning I want to be devil's advocate here but ranking is harder I think right now for those that are free to play because with the additions of Silver Surfer and Zabu those have been two month-to-month 
battle pass cards that have been absolutely meta defining. Every single meta list that I've made, I have to include Zabu and Silver Surfer. I'm literally doing a disservice to the community if I don't. They are critical to the current meta. And if you're not someone who purchased the battle pass and you don't have access to those two cards, then you're, I think you're at a disadvantage. And I don't want to go as far as to say that like it's a possible pay to win argument. Um, but like, I think the conversation could be had. So if you're a free to play player, for instance, and you are facing lots of Silver Surfer and Zabu and you don't have those cards yourself, hell yeah, the ranking can be extremely frustrating. They're two very good cards. And so not having access to those cards can be a little bit of a detrimental effect on your willingness to play the game and, and engage in the ranking system. So I don't want to say that like it's harder for free to players right now, but it kind of feels like it might be harder for free to play players right now. And I think it's worth mentioning that specifically with how impactful Silver Surfer and Zabu are in the current meta. Finally, the fifth point I want to bring up, because I don't want the video to be too long here. The fifth point is kind of really important, and um, this is what actually encouraged me and really motivated me to make this uh, this video because matchmaking is currently extremely opaque. While we still have an understanding of, you know, we're taking collection level into consideration, win rate and hidden MMR into consideration, we're taking uh, rank into consideration, we really don't know the exact metrics that Second Dinner is used for matchmaking. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because I had been suspecting for a while, as soon as I hit about rank 70, 72 range, I started reaching and playing against infinite players. And I was like, you know what? That's not really fair. Why would a rank 70 be against a rank 100? That is a 30 rank difference. That is a very significant difference, right? And at first I thought I was just being like a little, I was in my head. I thought I was being a little paranoid, right? And because like I didn't know the players I was facing. They had like the Herald of Galactus or the really, really dirty title. And I'm like, these are infinite players. They had the card backs and stuff, right? And I was like, like, well, obviously, those are prior seasons, but even this season, if they, if they have really, really dirty in their name, they're infinite, right? So I was thinking, like, maybe it's just a bot, or maybe, I don't know, right? I don't want to make any just snap judgments. I would emote, they wouldn't emote back anyway. And then something happened. I started facing people I knew, and I started facing other content creators, like, for instance, Coco4. I faced Coco4, and I know Coco4 very well. Absolutely shout out to Coco4. I'm going to have a link to his uh, stuff down below. I think he's an absolutely fantastic streamer, super talented player. And, um, Coco 4, I know for a fact, is infinite. So we played against each other, and I messaged him after. I said, what rank are you? And he's like, I'm infinite. And I'm like, well, I'm 72 right now. It's like 28 ranks different at the very, very least, right? And he's like, yeah, that's not quite right, right? Like, that's not a fair matchup. And maybe I thought it was like a, you know, one-off thing. And then, shortly thereafter, I went against uh, Kraken Null. And this was even crazier for me, because with Kraken Null... Not only is Kraken Null an infinite player, and I confirm this because we were uh, messaging each other, but Kraken Null is also like well over, like it's like I think 16k collection score. Like insane collection score, right? So I'm level 74 at this rank. I'm rank 74 at this point, and he's rank 102. Again, I'm thinking this is insane. Like why would a rank 70 something be facing off against an infinite player? That's an insane rank differential. And I think that players in like the 70s, 80s, and 90s are finding it so hard to rank up because they're facing infinite players. There are infinite players that get there and then start playing meme decks. And that's cool. I appreciate that. But there are a lot that are still hard sweating it out there because it's a competitive card game. Dudes want to win, right? And I got no problem with that. And they don't know who they're facing. They don't know they're facing because we don't know each other's ranks. So they don't know that they're facing someone that's 30 ranks under them. And I think the thing that really frustrates me from that perspective is like when I'm playing an infinite player, um, most other games, like I used to play like Warcraft 3 competitively. Whenever the elos were really, really wide, right? Like if I was ever facing a player that was really higher ranked than I was, if I won that game, I got bonus rank because like the expectation was, you know what? If I'm facing an infinite player, that infinite player should beat me, right? If I'm level 70, if I'm rank 70 and they're rank 100, they should beat me. And if I beat them, maybe I should get a little bonus for that, right? And, I mean, World, uh, Warcraft used to do it so, like, they would actually get penalized even more, which wasn't always a great system either because they were expected to win, you were expected to lose. If the results were flipped, you know, the matchmaker would have to account for that. Um, a very interesting thing to think about because as it is right now, if I'm playing against infinite players when I'm 70 or 80, I'm in the mid-80s right now as recording. If I'm in the mid-80s playing against infinite players, that's way harder for me than facing off against guys who are in the... 80s or 70s those like that's a huge gap right and then it goes to say okay well then what are the times am i facing if i'm in the 80s are there times where they don't find a match and am i facing someone in the 50s that i don't even realize 
right? And that's not fair to them either. So I think the matchmaking system is a little opaque right now. And I can confirm literally that if you're in the 70s and 80s, you will be facing infinite players. And I don't think that's fair. Um, so that can be a major, major factor as to why people are having so much difficulty climbing. Because I think that it would be much more frustrating if you saw like, oh, I just matched against an infinite player. Like, why am I matching against someone that's so high? And then right now you have the situation where like, you don't even know you're matching against an infinite player. And chances are, they're going to kick your butt, right? Like, and you don't really know why. You just think like, man, this guy had all the cars. This guy was so good. Like, what happened? Like, why am I losing these games? It's becoming so hard. So if you knew they were infinite, maybe you'd go into that game being like, you know what? I'm probably going to lose. And you accept the defeat a little easier, but then you're frustrated because of the matchmaking system. So I don't have an answer, but I'm telling you right now, this is what's happening. So I want to make this video simply for that reason, to really kind of shed some light on ranking right now, because I think that a lot of people are super frustrated with it. I've been frustrated with it, and I know that it's a common sentiment in the community. But guys, your feedback's important, so let me know your comments and your ideas in the comments section down below. You know, I know Second Dinner's always listening for feedback and things along those lines, so let's give them some ideas as how they can uh, potentially correct the experience of ranking in Marvel Snap. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next Marvel Snap video.